like, okay, we've looked out to even as far as 10,000 astronomical units away for a planet the size of Saturn, and there just isn't one. And their response is like, well, you didn't look for a smaller size planet. Yes, did yeah, you, you didn't. You, <laughs> you looked for a Neptune size one. <laughs> I bet your equipment doesn't even measure planets half the size of Saturn, you <laughs> idiots. <laughs> So you're telling me you went up and down this beach with a metal detector and found nothing. Well, then the pirate's treasure is obviously wood, motherfucker. Yes, right. So shit. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, or I'll have to get one of those jobs where you have to shower first. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath is off this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. Ready to learn. Oh, okay. Ready to learn. Well, hopefully we've got something else for you to do after this then. <laughs> We're also excited to welcome back two of our favorite guest masochists. Stan and Jordan are the hosts of the Knowledge Fight podcast, where they keep track of all the bat shit that dribbles out of Alex Jones's mouth and are thus close to immune from the insanity of our movies, at least as close as anybody else. Stan, Jordan, welcome back. Hey. Hello. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of that. What's this appearance number? Is this four? Something this like is that. Four now, yeah. This is this is the worst one by a wide mile. Yeah, Jordan <laughs> showed up and he was like, "Hey, I'm excited to watch a dumb anime." Yeah. <laughs> nope. Uh, nope. No. 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 <laughs> Certainly no. Certainly not. Yeah. Now, to be clear, we've made you guys watch happy science cult shit up to this point. Like, so that like, was it's, great. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like you haven't really dove into the insanity of it with us before. Sure, but there are more fucking Chuck Norris movies, man. Like, yeah. We'll go back to that well all goddamn day. Sting was probably in something else. Hell yes! <laughs> yeah. I feel like, you ever have a bad significant other who just keeps doing worse and worse shit so that you'll break up with them rather than them having to break up with you? That's uh -oh. how we approach guests here on God <laughs> <Awful> <laughs> Movie. <laughs> It, it, it's a it's a trial thing. It's a test. You're testing us, <laughs> right? And, uh, well, <laughs> let me tell you something. We're happy to fail. Yeah, happy to fail. <laughs> and because, like you said, we're masochists in a sense. Like we're listening to Alex Jones and and stuff so much that, like, yeah, fuck you for making us watch this, but we'll still probably come back and you know like, <laughs> see how much worse you can do. Yeah, yeah, basically, we're that couple that gets in a fight at every party. Yeah. <laughs> No, see, it's like those, you know, those old timey factories where they would just keep speeding up the line until everybody would complain and then they dial it back one notch. Like this is <laughs> this is the fastest we'll get. So so tell us, Dan, what will we be breaking down today? I mean, this wasn't a Christian movie. No, for sure. <laughs> so it betrays the the introduction that you just gave a little bit. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's uh, the, the Naburu movie, I guess we can say for sure. We know that much. <laughs> that is the title. That is the title. Beyond that, it's really hard to say. Yeah. It's a lecture more than it is a movie. It is not a movie. Yeah. No. It, it's a con no. continuous, annoying voiceover with repeated shots of animations of various things and a planet blowing up that made Jordan laugh his ass off. Yeah, that one is, that's the only part of the movie that I really enjoyed is that at one point a planet runs into another planet and then comes back to finish the job. <laughs> right, right. There's really only one thing I want to talk about, and I don't want to ruin it now, but we'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, there's only one thing in this entire movie that like made me like, all right, I'm interested in this. Okay. All right. Dying to know. But yeah, the rest of it's trash. That is. And Eli... How bad was this, and I'm putting it in air quotes, movie? Well, if you loved when the teacher would be hung over and roll a television set out in front of your class in the third through eighth grade, but you wish their divorce was going way, way worse, <laughs> you will love this movie. This is Hank Green's Descent into Madness. <laughs> so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Um, I'd say this is the best, worst introduction video to a, a futuristic hell, I think. <laughs> okay. Like the, the animated little cartoon characters describing what amounts to just pure onslaughts of insanity uh, <laughs> that you just have to believe. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's terrifying. 
I feel like if I have to choose this as a best worst anything, it should be like random words. <laughs> sure. Like, <laughs> like it, this is the best worst umbrella pickle coaster sandwich <laughs> <laughs> contraption. I that, don't know. That is a really good description like, of it. Surprisingly yeah, enough, yeah. It's not even, yeah. It's just, syntax shouldn't yeah. even be no, uh, no, no, no. followed. Right. It doesn't have to mean anything. It gets the point across. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Many have suggested it is an umbrella sandwich pickle. <laughs> <laughs> so, on the other hand, yeah, some experts some think experts, a different interpretation would be that it is the a truth is pickle. probably right in the middle. So <laughs> there's an exciting new world where <laughs> sandwich hamburger. Yes. Well, so I was going to go with best worst exploiting the fact that maybe isn't a legally protected term. Right, because like over and over again in this movie, it'll say, "But maybe planets are made of electricity," and I'm like, "But they're not, though." I like that, but we know that they aren't because we know what that would mean. Let me ask you a question, though. You're saying it's a legally protected term. Do you think that Mars is going to sue? <laughs> I wish. Well, yeah, well, no, I wish like, we yeah, had that yeah, opportunity. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Hold on. Since we're talking in the context of this movie, you're going to need to be way more specific. Are we talking about Mars the planet? Are yeah. we talking about Mars the god? <laughs> the god? Are we talking about possibly Marduk could be the name of Mars? <laughs> Where, what or what Mars stars. are we talking about here? <laughs> If a planet or pseudo deity was going to sue you for defamation, <laughs> right? What? Where? Where do they have jurisdiction? I'm just saying. Why else would it be red, guys? <laughs> why else would it be red? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, of course, go with the reason why we're watching today's movie: best, worst, direct insult to no illusions interest. Mm. So, Dan Jordan, mm -hmm. you might not know this, but the things that Noah loves, like secondary only to like. His wife and fairness in the world are ancient Sumerian history and space stuff. Mm. So this is about as close to like two guys heckling his his like nieces and nephews as I could find on the Internet. Like if they could have just jumped in with some random incorrect video game history facts, it would have really been the <laughs> trifecta. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This would be a great Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This wouldn't be too this bad. This is the next one. Right, right, right. Yeah. No, no, no. Totally. I get it now. It yeah, all makes sense. Assassin's Creed Sumer. I mean, hey, Planet yeah. X is definitely not Planet 10. They've, now I know that. Yeah, they've covered <laughs> Egypt. They've covered Greece. Totally. They've covered uh, the Vikings in the last one. Now, right. Marduk. And Marduk. <laughs> yeah. Assassin's yeah. Creed Marduk. <laughs> <laughs> And then it has to list the 50 names after. Uh, yeah. That's one of the collectibles. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I hope I get to play as fish man. Please let me play as fish oh, man. God. There are a lot of boss fights. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a lot of fucking what on the other side of the break. So we're going to keep it brief. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the insults to the term theory that are the Nibiru movie. Lou, Lou, Lou doing Noah stuff. Noah stuff is my favorite stuff. Oh, hello, no illusions. Oh, hey there, Wool Dasher Mizzle. I, I, I don't think we have an ad for you this week, do we? No, no, you do not. But I'm a fairy, and I'll tell you, flavor is in full bloom at HelloFresh this month. Enjoy the tastes of spring with chef-crafted recipes featuring ripe, seasonal ingredients delivered right to your door. Now, now, wait a second. I know that with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Uh, that's why it's America's number one meal kit. But you fool! HelloFresh does more than just delicious dinners. Not only can you take your pick from 40 weekly recipes, but you can choose from over 100 items to round out your order, from snacks and easy lunches to desserts and pantry necessities. Everything arrives in one box on a delivery day you choose. I mean... That sounds amazing, but how do you... When the spring sunshine is calling your name, don't call for takeout. Get HelloFresh instead. Their quick and easy meals make feeding the family a cinch, and without the high price tag. Their new fast and fresh options are ready in just 15 minutes or less. That's how, no illusions, that's how. I mean, HelloFresh did send us a box. The meals were easy to unpack and delicious. So I, how do I sign up? 
Go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use code Awful16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. So wait, just go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use the code Awful16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping? That's right. Nice. Thanks. Hey, any idea why Heath isn't on this episode? I did not turn him into a sunflower, I'll tell you that. You turned him into a sunflower, didn't you? To be fair, he's kind of enjoying it. No, you know what? That that tracks. All right, everyone. Welcome to the first writer's room meeting for the Nibiru movie. There is a dragon in my blood! Yep. Yes, yes, there is, uh, Frank. But, but what did we say before we came in? Slow play it! Exactly. Now, obviously, Frank has, you know, a lot that he needs to get out there. Planets made of electricity. Right. Yep. Yeah, but but we want people to be, you know, open. So any any thoughts? So many thoughts. Oh, just, not not you yet, buddy. Um well, I what if we uh, did uh, Frank's dragons? Kill you. But like we surrounded it with real facts about planets and stuff. Okay. Okay, but nothing Frank believes is connected to any real facts. No! Mars got into a fight with his grandma. No, yeah, that's fair. That's a fair point. But Mars does exist. So, like, why don't we just explain some fun things about Mars and then we talk about Frank's blood stuff? You know, that that might just work. And then Venus was green. It it sure was, buddy. It sure was. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on a cartoon ragdoll robot at a lectern in front of a Hubble image. That is the movie's opening bid. <laughs> Straight in. No lube crazy, everybody. <laughs> <sighs> it's nice to be welcome to the movie. Come on. it's not, they, So few <laughs> movies bother to welcome you. To Wait, is that true? I thought it opened with the opening scroll no, no, from no. Stephen Hawking. No, it opened with the guy at the podium, and then he did an ad. <laughs> Yes. 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 That's why I thought it wasn't yeah. part of the movie. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was one of those like, and in thirty seconds you'll be able to skip over the ad. Mm. That right. was part of the whole, that was part of the real movie. Yeah, oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. Go, no, that was go a... get this weird tarot book. Okay, or something. all right, yeah. all right. Yeah, it was a pitch for this space program's tarot deck. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. It also there was also like sort of an in advance apology. They're like, also, our entire movie was made by a very small team of people, so you can't get mad at how low quality. It is. Yeah, if you give us more money, maybe this would be better. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. I like a good lower your expectations. I think that's fair. I think yeah. that's fair. Yeah. So, but the movie basically, yeah, it, it it primes us for what's to come. It advertises itself, and it tells us that it's going to tell us the Sumerian epic. Word of warning, no, the fuck it isn't. Yes. I guess that's one way to put a bunch of our YouTube videos we strung together and called a movie. Yeah. It does seem like uh, there's a lot of reused footage. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems like they play the same shots over and over and over again, which I respect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, low budget. Yeah. You should have lowered your expectations if you wanted more animation. They told yeah. you what you were going to get. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's on you if this you're disappointed. Should have bought their tarot deck. <laughs> this is going to be boring to watch visually. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the problem I have with you fellas is that uh, I would have taken get him. I would have taken his advice and been like, "Oh, okay. Well, then I won't watch this video." Like that is such <laughs> it's such good advice. Like I feel like I'm forced into a choice that I would never make in a choose your own adventure novel. Yes. 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 You know? We're forcing you further into the haunted house. You're just ready to you're Jordan's yeah. ready to go. He's like, "Oh no, this this is creepy and old. Let's just leave. Let's just no, go find a hotel." Totally. And there's a sign that says haunted on the front. I yeah. remember yeah. I remember growing up I had like a Jurassic Park choose your own adventure and on one of the pages was like don't go and I was like hell yes and then I closed the book and just moved on <laughs> in my life <laughs> turn to cover yeah <laughs> exactly so yeah so we get our little ad they tell us to have a beautiful experience <laughs> I wrote oh, my Lord. notes okay relax yeah right uh, yeah, yeah. And then we get that we get a big star explosion and we get the big Stephen Hawking quote which is presented as though they're like so we're going to lower your expectations about the quality of the movie, but also about the definition of the word theory a bit. 
Mm-hmm. Sure. Right, because they have Stephen Hawking saying like, okay, so this isn't really scientifically what a theory means, but for the purposes of the book that I'm introducing right now, this is what we're going to pretend theory means. And the and the movie's like, see, Stephen Hawking, theory is just whatever we make the fuck up. The late Stephen Hawking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had replaced it with the Trade Federation had been embargoing right. Naboo for a while. <laughs> and so yeah, exactly. the Galactic Republic has sent the Jedi to negotiate the end of at, the... At the end of all the scrolls yeah. and the, pre, uh, the prequels, it does say, have a beautiful experience. <laughs> it does mean thank you. I'm, I'm sad Lucas took those out. I really yeah. am. And I should point out, they don't even stick the landing for Stephen Hawking's turn of phrase right Mm -mm. Stephen Hawking is like well I could give you an example and they're like right but that's actually going to be a little too rigorous for us on the other hand there's this thing called historical theories which we just made up right here on YouTube yeah yeah no he's like see but but Hawking is talking about scientific theories historical theories are different that's just making shit up I'm like I feel (laughs) like it's not though historical theories are I have an idea (laughs) right (laughs) now it's legitimate yeah. I appreciate the sheer volume of comma on the other hand. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot of, okay, well, here's the truth, but comma on the other hand. Right. Well, that's, what, that's what historical theorizing exactly. is. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Who, I, and I thought this constantly throughout the movie, who did this work on that this is their movie, right? Who were they like? Right. So we think Mars is a four-eyed Sumerian god alien that came down to tell us about the time he fought his grandma. On the other hand, I have pretty bad schizophrenia. And they were like, well, look, those are really great, really well thought out points. I'm going to consider them both equally. So, Eli, the correct answer to this is everyone I bought psychedelics from in college. I mean, just honestly, I sat through so (laughs) many of the. So and there's also this great bit at the end of this scene where this is not the first time they're going to do this, where they basically say, and remember, it's all up to you to decide what's right. You know, we're going to present both sides and you get to decide which is correct. And I'm like, that's not how correct works at all. Yeah. No. That's when relativism goes too far. Yeah. <laughs> Relatively speaking. They have this cutesy turn of phrase they use. They say, take everything we say with a grain of salt or a dash of pepper. And I was like, this would be a lot more fun if you didn't also have a movie called Healing Yourself with Food, Science Spirit <laughs> Channel.com. Do you heal yourself with pepper? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if someone if someone said that to me in real life, like take this with a grain of salt or a dash of pepper, we're throwing hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm swinging. Well, yeah, it's even worse than that because what he actually says is take it with a dash of Himalayan sea salt or a dash of pepper. No, nah, I hate it's, it. It's even fucking it's, worse. It it's is even more hands sheer. throwy. Yeah. No, time to get chin checked. Yep. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> that's a that's a bricking. Yeah. <laughs> So then the movie starts for a third time, uh, <laughs> this time with credits, and we zoom in on the earth and we see a dude meditating and we get a montage that I wrote in my notes as Wizards, Angels, Indiana Jones, etc. Yeah. Well, and they also said that the guy was going around Indiana Jonesing. And yeah. Like, I, I can't use that as a verb. I thought that was uh, <laughs> it's one of the few things I remember, being offended by that yeah. verb. <laughs> Yeah, my notes for this are, a guy on a surfboard's going to fight a Furby? (laughs) Yes. No, that is exactly that. Because like in the Sumerian epic, there's also this weird dueling titles moment, right? Where it comes up and it says the Sumerian epic. And then a completely different title screen comes up and says Nibiru, the secret origin of our world. (laughs) Like some weird compromise. Yeah. This movie started the way Return of the King ended. You know, like it never, like it never... (laughs) It just kept going. It kept going. They were like, okay, now we're going to introduce this movie again, inexplicably. Yeah, every time we accidentally saw the time that had passed and how much time was left, Jordan was re-victimized. I was like, (laughs) we hit 20 minutes and I thought we were at 45 and I I wanted to to light shit up. Yeah, no, the the first 20 minutes of this movie were certainly the longest, too. So they're going to start off talking about the archaeological discovery of Nineveh and the and the and us first learning about the Sumerians and they're going to do it wrong. So here's the thing about the Sumerians. The Sumerians were the first civilization that wrote shit down. So if you're an idiot, you can go through and say, "Well, they're the first to do everything." No, they're the first to write down the fact that they did everything, right? They're the first ones that did it that we can tell they did it because they wrote it the fuck down. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So they're like, they had the first math and it's like, no, the <laughs> fuck they didn't. They're the first that wrote down math. You idiots. They, they did say that like they were the first civilization, except for other civilizations, depending <laughs> yes. on how you define civilization, <laughs> yeah. which I thought was a expert level. Uh, I did appreciate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did appreciate. This is what most people say is the beginning of civilization. Now, a lot of people disagree. So who fucking cares? Uh, define it <laughs> the way you want. Yeah. It feels like someone forced me and Jordan to do a history report at gunpoint, <laughs> but we would get shot if we got anything wrong. So I thought you'd get like, shot if you got anything I right. I was going to say, you got that You got that twisted around. Every time every time you say a true fact, you get an electric shock. It's the, it's the Milgram yeah. experiment. Yeah. <laughs> so, and thus become a planet. Spoilers for later in the movie. Right. right. Now, there is the, it is bizarre to me that the movie has like an aside. It like literally steps out of itself for a second to say, by the way, we are aware that other places exist. I just want you to know we're not going to talk about them, but we know about Egyptians. <laughs> yes. and, and I wrote I wrote my notes. Who on the team was like, guys, I'm really worried that our overemphasis on the historical significance of Sumeria will make people skeptical about our story about interdimensional fire giants yes. that visits <laughs> Earth to tell their story. I think what they do, and here's my pitch on this. Early on, they overemphasize that they don't know anything about the actual history of Sumeria and the like, right? Mm. But they get enough close to it that you can kind of trust them to have done a lot of research while at the same time leaving it open for interpretation. Now, they do that front-loaded with reality, so that way later on you're not like, hold on, let me look up, did a different planet hit Earth a while back and then hit it again? No? Okay, (laughs) well, moving on. Right, yeah, there is definitely an attempt to sort of lull you to sleep with this first 30 minutes where they're by and large going to talk about real shit. Right. Like most they they get some historical facts wrong here and there. But by and large, they're they're discussions of like how we learned about Sumerian writing and shit and the Sumerian mythology. Most of that they get correct. I did like how they were going through the museum exhibits and one of them was Sumerian stuff. Yeah, that was Sumerian nice. stuff. <laughs> yes, and then the next the one was Sumerian tablets, which I think constitutes stuff. Yeah, I think that's yeah. Part of the I, stuff. I would have chosen potpourri. I would have uh-huh. been super, Sumerian <laughs> potpourri. <laughs> oh, there you go. Much better. Nice little cross section. They're talking about cuneiform and they zoom in on their cartoon tablets and none of them are written in cuneiform. I'm like, come on, guys, at least fucking try. <laughs> I liked that the Sumerians invented the first bicameral legislature. I liked how they threw that one in. (laughs) Yep. Like, Mm -hmm. see how great a system it was? The Sumerians invented it 5,000 years ago. That means it's smart. (laughs) Right. No, yeah. Nobody was more egalitarian than that slave owning society. (laughs) Give me a fucking break. So, but yeah. And then they're they're like, but the most important thing that the Sumerians gave us is their religion. And I'm like, "Mm, no, I think it was writing. I still think it was probably writing. But now they, they start talking about the Sumerian gods a little bit, right? And and we should point out that in the upper right corner of the video, they'll have citations now and again for their shit. Yeah, they do. And oh, God. They seem legit, too. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm so proud of them for putting up Popular Mechanic. Uh-huh. Yes! <laughs> yeah, Wikipedia. And it's also, I don't know why, but it's always like... 10 links below the link they should be using, right? So they'll be like, Mars exists. And instead of Wikipedia or NASA, it's always like stars.com. And I'm like, I feel like stars.com isn't on the bleeding edge. Guys. <laughs> they also have the the like ancient history encyclopedia. Oh, yeah. It's like the constant thing that they cite. Mm-hmm. And I tried to Google that and there's a number of things called that. And so I'm not sure which one they're using. I wonder if it's a crowdsourced one. All I know is I want to sell it door to door. Yes. Right? <laughs> so How many volumes? Oh, so many. An ancient Sumerian opens the door and you're like, finally, I am going to nail this. Sale. Yeah. Is, is the Enlil of the house home? <laughs> <laughs> Now, but I want to point out, though, so like they use at the at the beginning, once again, lulling us to sleep. They use popular mechanics, Wikipedia, stars dot com, the ancient history, open source, whatever. But we are 12 minutes in before one of the references is to Zechariah Sitchin's The Twelfth Planet. They tried to sneak hey. that one by me. <laughs> My main man, Sitch. Yeah, yeah that's oh. how I knew good shit was coming. Right. We yeah. were going to get Sitch slapped before it was over. This movie in many ways was like bullshit edging, right? Because they'd be like, boring history, boring history, boring history. But as our friend David Icke points out, and you're like, (laughs) 
that just does not go over the edge really ever. <laughs> kind of like it doesn't it doesn't get to the point where there's like ha, ha, ha. yeah they're not willing to to just come out and say hey guess what mm. gods are real mm. and they're right. aliens and I fucking know them yeah yep. I worship fish man yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they never slip it in I am a fish man alight but. <laughs> But they, they tell us here, they're like, you know, the gods, though, in like Sumerian mythology might also have been aliens from an undiscovered planet. And I'm like, no, they mightn't. And they're like, yeah, but we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> but what if they are? All right. All right. So some people will say. You need to use your discernment to tell yes. if they are different. <laughs> yes. That's the biggest red flag word for me. In yeah. the, everybody who uses that word, regardless of religion or anything, is like, they're, I know what you're saying. They're trying to sneak one by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I get what you're doing. It's like people who call women females. Yeah, you just yep. know. I just mm -hmm. know now about you. Yeah, you, know? yeah, yeah. you told me all I need to know. <laughs> yep. So, okay, so now we're going to open up on the Sumerian creation epic proper. And I'm going to go through this quick because it's fucking boring. Right. It's yeah. the, the mother goddess and she had baby gods and then the gods got mad at other gods and then they fought each other and whatever. There's so many names. I couldn't keep all this straight. There's like. Mimu and Mama yeah. and uh, two two names that are and just separate Lil by an A. And Ki and Ki, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. An and Ki and An Ki. It's like, come on, give me a yeah. fucking break. Yeah, yeah, come on, it's On and Ki. Now, many scholars believe that the most popular interpretation <laughs> is that it's En Ki. But uh, we don't know. On the other hand. Yeah. My favorite piece of bullshit from this incredibly long, incredibly boring epic is that there's the two original gods and then one of them just has an advisor named Mumu. And I wrote in my notes, where the fuck did Mumu come from? Monster.com. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. But yeah, but it's the it's the basic. So the Sumerian creation myth in simple fucking terms there was a female god and a male god they had a bunch of kids they didn't like the kids they tried to kill the kids the kids killed them instead and then they used their bodies to to create the universe that's you know that's a very common myth that gets repeated over and over again through a bunch of different yeah. ancient societies the titans and what have you exactly right, yeah, right exactly so they finish this up and then they're like, it, there's also this great moment where the video itself is like, but things are about to get very interesting. And we're all like, I don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've always I've always been confused. And this this was confusing yet again, the chipper attitude with which this lecture was given regarding what ostensibly we're going to find out is the truth in some fashion. And it is the horrific God's created human beings and hate them story. That's the truth yeah, is what they're trying <laughs> mm -hmm. to tell me. And you're chipper about that shit. Yeah, right. yeah we're, we're invented as slaves. <laughs> yeah. Like what yeah. the fuck are you talking about? We, I mean, Dan and I were talking about this, like the way this should ended with now we know where God is. Let's go fucking get him. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now it's time. <laughs> yeah. Now it's time to wreck his shit. Yeah. We've doxed God. Yeah. We doxed God. <laughs> he's, on, he's on the Buru. <laughs> yeah. Let's go get him. Let's yeah. ride. Yeah. Let's go with the magic school bus kids and kill God. God, come on, Absolutely. let's do this. And I love how after like the 36 stupid fucking names and all the crazy shit that they throw at us, they go like, now you're probably wondering at this point, how does any of this relate to the Bible? <laughs> Why would that be what I was wondering? I was wondering that. <laughs> I was wondering that also. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> because obviously I know the Bible is true. So you're going to have to convince right. me with all the rest of this nonsense. Whew. And they're like, okay, so, but to connect it to the Bible... We have to now turn to the Babylonian creation epic, and then we do all that same shit again. Again? It was like when someone was like, well, to understand this story about this vacation, you need to hear about our last vacation. And I'm just like, oh, why can't I just die? <laughs> just I, let me die, though. I think I might have blacked out. <laughs> yeah. that. I don't know if I remember that happening. To but me, to it, be, I, I, was, I think I was in a coma for yeah. part of this. No, you, you absolutely were. He was just sitting there stewing. That's what it looked like. His eyes were down below the desk just going, Fine. Well, like, I can put up with a lot. <laughs> Of trash. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> but when I'm watching a movie, especially for something where it's like we're going to talk about it, man, do I need a plot? Yep. Yeah, man, that would have been nice. I need something. Uh, I need to know I'm going into a lecture ahead of time. Yeah, because you know it feels I mean? like now we're doing a book report on a bad lecture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I, I, I don't know the Sumerian story or reality of what? it enough to well <laughs> it's not it's not something i've spent a lot of time on Fair so enough. watching this like anytime there is something about like sumerian history i'm like i know you're not i know this is wrong 
But right. <laughs> I am kind of interested. I don't know. Right. I, you know, and and I don't care to like I don't not 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 to insult the Sumerians, but uh, based on the, watching this, it's, I don't care enough to to rebut it. Right. I feel like we I feel like you dragged us to church on Christmas and then they <laughs> played the nativity play and then once it was done they were like, "Ah, now, here's what would happen if we changed one character and then they played the whole fucking thing again. Yeah, you know? Yes, exactly. Oh, it was sick. And, and look, let me tell you, honestly, as a person who had a weird fucking obsession with Sumerian mythology at one point in his life, I don't know that the, that makes the experience better. <laughs> it might actually make it worse. I do. It makes it worse. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. We know. So... So yeah, so we get the Babylonian version of the exact same Sumerian myth. This is the one with that starts with Absu and Tiamat, and then Tiamat has kids and wants to kill the kids and blah, 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 blah. Ultimately, the kids team up against her, so she has to summon her army of, like, mini-bosses. Yes! Mm. The hairy one! <laughs> By far, far and away the best part of this movie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, <laughs> that was... I could watch... An entire movie about totally. Fishman. Yep. Right. If the rest of this movie had just been them listing more and more absurd. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that they were just like venomous snake. Yeah. Exalted snake. Yeah. The weathered beast. Scorpion man. <laughs> yes. Scorpion man. Scorpion man. Like, how the fuck are you going to introduce Scorpion man and then never come back to him? Never come back. It reminded back. me of the Sinister Six when they did the sure. Spider-Man turn off the dark performance sure. yeah, on sure. Letterman. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We've got a man made entirely out of bees. <laughs> it's just exactly. so great. Yes. I, I also, I also appreciate that they don't get names. Like we're, we're at the bottom of the, the credits, one. you know, that's like, <laughs> right. We got Enki, we got Ed Lil, we got Absu, uh, eh, Scorpion Man, you know, like we got the hairy got Scorpion one. Man yes. number two. We got friend of Scorpion Man. <laughs> also, Fish Man had a knife. Fish Man had a fucking knife. Fish, Fish Man, Man did have a Fish knife. Ni Fish Man had a tattoo that says, Mom, I love you and all that shit. <laughs> Fishman was coveted. Fishman had a teardrop tattoo. <laughs> yeah. <Yep>. Yes. <laughs> Get in the water, motherfuckers. I'll show you <laughs> what. It was the best. Yeah. It it made everything else so much worse. Yeah. <laughs> Just that minute and a half yeah. or so of the roster of yep. the dirty dozen. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. just, well, you on. expect. I mean, it, it, you expect it to follow Chekhov's law. You know, if you introduce a fishman, that fishman's going to do something. Right, yeah. with a knife. A fishman oh, with a knife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fishman with a knife ready to go never, ever comes back to it. And Yeah, they just get tied up. That's it. Yeah. One other thing I love about this weird creation myth, because again, the one where like, there's a mom and a dad and he wants to kill the kids and the kids kill him instead. That's all pretty like usual. We've seen it in Greek myths and stuff. But Marduk, Marduk, I don't know who, what crazy Babylonian like stomped onto the center floor where they were coming up with this and invented Marduk. But Marduk literally just leaps into the center of the story and they're like, yeah, he had four eyes and four ears and he breathes fucking fire. <laughs> <laughs> It's like Michael Scott doing improv, but in ancient <laughs> philosophy <laughs> myth. I would take Fishman with a knife in that fight. Mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. sure. I'm back in Fishman. <laughs> so, yeah, so eventually the gods realize that only Marduk can save the day. So they give him the four wins and then he, they, they agree to make him the king of the gods if he can defeat Tiamat. And so he goes and defeats Tiamat and they build this up. They've got all of the 11 mini bosses and they tell you which weapons he brought. And he levels those up with some fucking side quests or something. And then he comes in and they're like, yeah, he just he threw a net on her and shot an arrow into her mouth. And I'm like, well, I could have done that. <laughs> but then the other thing, the other thing that's a problem is like he didn't kill the other 11. No. What happened to them? No, they just ran away. Yeah. Right. Where's Scorpion Man. They bitched out. Fish Man lives to fight another day. Uh, you know. <laughs> oh, you know? 
that? What are we, that's the point, though. That's what you say to this shit. Is that what happened to the other eleven? And they're like, ah, we're gonna move on Scorpion to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> lives on. Ah, in, you're you're in the ruining it. You're ruining it. We're having fun talking about Marduk, and you're like, what happened to the other eleven? Boo! You're a fighter. We need to come together with open hearts. <laughs> t- t- telling me what what happened to the weathered beast after this fight would help me come together. Sure, because I want to know. Well, I don't know that part of the story yet. Okay, give me another weekend at the hospital. We haven't found that tablet that tells us about. <laughs> yes, Batman. yeah, exactly. Right, I'll find right. it. Ne- I'll find it next week. I'll get my notes together. Sure. <laughs> they even have a scene where we see Marduk surfing in on some big fucking wave, and all eleven of the bad guys coming at him, and then they just ignore it from there. It's so fucking weird. But yeah, so he shoots her in the stomach. He cuts her in two with a club, which seems like the wrong tool for the job. That's how great he is. After she's dead, Mm -hmm. I just have to point out that according to this great Babylonian myth, he shoots an arrow into her stomach, she dies, and then he's like, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, hey. Yeah, he splits her in two, and he makes the heavens and the earth out of her. Y'all sound crazy to me. If you, you, okay, okay, so you think that a dragon is just going to die from one arrow? Hell no, you got to confirm. Double tap that dragon. (laughs) Yes. So- Jordan, are you Marduk? Because I have lots of evidence that you're hey, Marduk. Listen, I am going to dethrone God one way or the other, whether I get those four wins back or not, okay? <laughs> so, so, and then he starts talking about, like, and then, you know, the uh, Tiamat was slashed uh, in, in twain, and they made the heavens and the earth out of her. And I'm like, okay, so far we're following the Sumerian myth. And it's like, and then there were 600 lower gods and 300 higher gods. And I'm like, ooh, we're edging into Zechariah Sitchin bullshit now, y'all. Was Fishman one of those six hundred? No, <laughs> Fishman is just he's just out of the fucking story. I don't. It's it's well, like I'm they were trying to then. set up yeah. for like a TV show that was gonna be, be like a like a spinoff from this movie or something. I don't. He has a startup. Um, it got a lot of funding, but unfortunately, it got caught up in the Silicon Valley Bank thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, ironically, his company is underwater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, clearly show over. <laughs> End of episode. Well, I, I feel like Dan needs a minute to come to grips with the fact that we're not going to see Fishman again. So we're going to give him a minute for that. But we're back in a flash with even more of the Nibiru movie. Hey, are you Eli? Yeah. Are you the personal trainer I hired online? I'm sorry. Bikes? Bikes can't be your name, right? No, no. Yeah, it's bikes. So you ready to get started? Yeah, I I was just hoping we could go over some of my goals. I could tell you the workouts I'm used to, the equipment I have, and we could sort of go from there. Sorry, sorry. I couldn't hear anything you said because I was making a mean TikTok about a fat baby. Yeah, maybe I should have just stuck with FitBob. What's FitBob? Is it it a steroid? Because I'm on steroids. Nope, it is not. If you're looking to take your workout to the next level, check out FitBod. The FitBod app creates a workout program that's personalized to your goals, your fitness level, and available equipment. It learns from your previous workouts and adapts as you improve. Honestly, it's the perfect companion to help you crush your fitness goals this summer. Start making progress towards your fitness goals today with 25% off a FitBod subscription. 25% off? That sounds awesome. It is. There's no better time to level up your fitness habit. Try FitBod today. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at fitbod.me slash gam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash gam. All right. Are you ready to get sprung while I tell you how plain chicken breasts aren't that bad? I mean, I paid $90, so. Nice. Nice. At last. I, the great Tiamat, have summoned my warriors for aid in this, my final battle. Scorpion Man. Yes. Wild Lion. (laughs) The Exalted Serpent. Yes. Venomous Snake. Oh, um, also. The Big Weathered Beast. Oh, boy. Have I been through it. Let me tell you. The Furious Snake. Also, also, yes. The hairy one. I don't feel like I'm bringing a lot to the team. Bullman. Fishman. Sure, hope the fight's underwater. And the great dragon. Oh, I thought that was you. No, no, it's a, it's a different dragon. Oh, man, that's kind of confusing. Also, why are there three snakes? 
any word on whether this fight's going to be underwater. It's really important to me. Everyone shut up, okay? We're going to fight my fire-breathing grandson and the four winds, and that's final. Fish man, I gave you a knife. Uh, I just... I just feel like I never really recovered from the lockdown, you know? Yeah, I kind of feel that. Yeah, totally, totally. I'm a mm-hmm. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up on Patch. That's the little thing, robot doll thing that's at the it's the lectern. I had a theory that his name is that because he's a big fan of Clarence Carter. No. <laughs> Patch is on depending on your son to pull the family through. <laughs> My son, it's all left up to you. You know how bored Dan is by the length of song. My daddy right, was yeah. a big old yeah. man. <laughs> I could see him with a shovel in his head. See. So, so, it, and of course, once again, the movie's like, now you're still probably wondering how this all connects to the Bible. I'm like, not what I was fucking wondering. And it's like, Psalm 74, motherfucker. God fights a goddamn dragon, just like in Sumerian. <laughs> mm-hmm. What? <laughs> Which is such a tenuous connection, right? Like, there are actually like through lines of Sumerian and Babylonian yep. mythology into the Bible. They have the fucking flood myth. The rib thing is from <laughs> Sumerian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think the flood myth they even brought up earlier. They could have yeah, just gone did. back to that. Yeah. yeah. But I like, they were, they were like, no, I think you'll find that both books contain water. Yep. <laughs> so- <laughs> Hold on. I mean, y'all, y'all are missing, you're misunderstanding, okay? That part of the Bible, that could have been written by anybody. All right. But the Psalms, you know, those were written by King David himself. Yes. You can trust that guy because God told you you can trust that no, guy. No, he does. He did. Unless According- he wants to fuck your wife, well, in which case you cannot trust that guy. Uh, yeah, Speaking that of fucking true. your wife, that's another Clarence Carter song. Nice. Slip away. <laughs> What would there I we go. Do? There we go. Yes, that's what I'm For talking just about. A little moment. <laughs> what would I give just to have you near? Maybe we could try. I'll take this copyright strike. I'm for it. I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> you know, Clarence Carter was blind. That's how I, he was so sensual. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The sense, the believe, sense of sex I was elevated. The you're looking for is sensuous. <laughs> So it, so then they're, they're like, you know, so we learned all of these stupid fucking myths. What do they all mean? And I'm like, the Sumerians didn't know what was going on with the universe. They're like, most of academia sees this as an allegory. And I'm like, what the fuck does the rest of academia <laughs> see it as to? The rest of academia having a psychotic break. <laughs> <laughs> It was at this point of the movie, whenever they were willing to pivot one more time, that I was like, what I've learned is that the past needs some fucking editors because <laughs> this shit is out of control. We need to cut down on characters. There's too many. Yes. Uh, 600, you 300. Get rid of yeah, no, no, no. Don't need them. <laughs> Consolidate. But don't don't you dare in that edit get rid of Harry Beast and Listen, uh, Weather the only, Fish Man. The only people that the story is about in my world is Scorpion Man and Fish Man going right. on adventures. <laughs> Buddy cop. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah then, then then they're like and maybe while well, we're doing biblical connections maybe kingu is like original sin and i'm like only because you're allowed to say maybe before any assertion dude again <laughs> not a legally protected term they, they do the whole thing where they're like oh and look we can even write the names of the sumerian gods over the kabbalic tree of life and i'm like again you can write anything you want there we can't stop you <laughs> If no, we could, we would. <laughs> guys, let's find our grounding in something that our all audiences are going to relate to. The completely unexplained Kabbalistic tree of life. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, and then, but basically the, the point they're making is like, yeah, maybe these are all just stories that somebody you know took some fucking mushrooms and came up with, but maybe it's an alien code about the true origins of the universe. Yeah, maybe. It really could be either. Yeah, it could be anything. Yeah. 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 I accept that. Yeah. It's the following parts that I'm struggling with. You know, yeah. like when you say, oh, maybe this could be a secret alien code. I say, fair enough. Maybe it could be. Now you have to back yeah, that up. Yeah, what do we do with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do we do with that? Maybe. Now what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's the problem that we're running into. Boy, was it a problem. How? 
Well, to really dig into that, we have to go all the way back to the early 20s and the birth of Zechariah Sitchin. So this is where we're going to actually get into some biographical stuff. See, see, again, this is where we get into trouble is that uh, I, I was I was talking about uh, the other stuff. And now we're getting back into Zechariah Sitchin in the 1920s. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to go back to maybe what do we do with this whole knowledge thing? And then instead we're like, well, in order to learn about that, we have to start somewhere else. No, start at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so. So when, when Zechariah Sitchin was a little boy, he was at fucking religion school, and they started talking about how the the Bible has giants in it, in the book of Genesis. And Zechariah was like, fucking what? And he made a career out of that. <laughs> well, I think he should have been more concerned about that teacher's giant eyebrows. Yeah. Than, yes. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be worried about giants or Nephilim or anything. I'd be getting that guy a trimmer. Right. Why <laughs> yeah. do you have Nephilim eyebrows is the real question. Exactly. Yeah. Here's here's our plot to this movie. All right. The growth of Zachariah Sitchin's facial hair. Right. He sees the teacher with giant eyebrows and he says, no, I'll never become that. Uh, right. I'm believing in giants and giants have mustaches. Alternative theory. OK. That guy, the teacher, sure. was the hairy one. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that dude was an exhausted beast. <laughs> he was fucking tired. I, I look. I know a lot of middle and elementary school teachers. They are all exhausted. Mm. They are yeah, all no, they are beasts. all the weathered beast. Yeah, <laughs> weathered beasts. It was the exalted serpent, not the exhausted <laughs> serpent. <laughs> <laughs> That would be funny if one of the guys was a tired snake. Yeah, I want the weathered beast and the exhausted serpent to have it all. We've got a lot of great pairings here, I've and been, nobody's like, exploring these characters I've been at all. Slithering all day. I'm so Sorry, tired. My snake has uh, seasonal affective disorder. We don't talk about it. I'm exhausted. Uh, yeah. You don't even know what it's like. I've been being hit by this wind all day. Mm. Jesus uh. Christ. So, but in, in, instead of talking about all of those interesting buddy cop possibilities, we, we, we're still on Zechariah Sitchin, and, and, and we get to 1976 when he publishes the first of his nutty ass fucking books. I, I've read that book, by the way. <laughs> Have you really? The Twelfth Planet. I read, I think, the first three books of oh, that uh, Earth Chronicles thing. Yeah. Oh, that's weird shit there. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, there's a lot of like, I, I remember seeing a lot of diagrams of mm -hmm. things in there. I'm like, wow. You know, that, it's true. If I, there's diagrams. That's a drawing. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you, sure. can't just, you can't just draw those. Yeah. That's a good, that's a no, lot. No, you're right. They won't let you. There's, but, and, and the, the movie is like, now, of course, a lot of people have pointed out that in his book, Sitchin gets really basic stuff wrong and just makes a bunch of shit up. Nevertheless, and I'm like, no, you don't get to nevertheless that statement. The movie just has to fucking end there. Many people pointed out he was fucking wrong and provably so is the end of the story. And though. making it up and just lying. And it's like, mm, nevertheless, we're a YouTube channel. <laughs> you say that you say that. But on the other hand. Yes, <laughs> well, right, right. because this is another one of those moments where they're like, just have your own experience as we go through this story. I'm like, who the fuck else's experience am I going to have, you goddamn idiots? <laughs> they say, let's see if it stands up to science. And I wrote in my notes, it doesn't. Lunch? Anyone want to yeah. get lunch instead of watch the rest of this movie? <laughs> so... So, okay, so now we're really going to start digging into Sitchin's bullshit. Now, of course, the 12th planet, the hypothesis behind this is all that, like, a fucking rogue planet shaped the early solar system and also was a god. It doesn't make more sense as you dig deeper, right? It's true. Yeah, it's the guy came in and messed up the bar and it just settled in that way. Yeah. <laughs> the theory of universal creation. Right. And they're like, you know, so first we're going to explain the standard model of how solar systems form rather boo boring yes I, li I literally wrote in my notes boo more lore about dungeons and dragons boo <laughs> <laughs> but there's a, they're like but there's a different model called the electric universe theory that we'll talk more about later so maybe this is all wrong <laughs> look forward to that folks that that's a fun one but they explain the standard model of like stellar Genesis. And they're like, now, of course, the problem with that standard model is that where would the water come from on Earth? And I'm like, it's asteroids, though. We know the answer to that. Mm. And then they're like, it's it's um asteroids, actually. But but hold on. <laughs> How did the water get on the asteroid? <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll discover that it is turtles all the way down. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. 
But we, we should talk about sort of Sitchin's trick here because that's what they're going to spend a lot of the rest of the movie doing, which is that Sitchin found, I don't know, some percentage of the Babylonian slash Sumerian myths. And I don't know what percentage. And he was like, hey, here I am in 1970 where I know a lot more stuff than people knew in Sumerian times. If I just hastily cut and paste the names from this Sumerian myth onto modern scientific theories, I can make it seem like the time dimension worked the other way around, except he did it in the laziest possible way, right? The, w the way that he staples these names onto things is things like Moo is Mercury because of M and <laughs> Tiamat is the earth because the earth is pretty and yes, so, yes, is and so is Tiamat. Yeah, exactly. He's like, but what did the Sumerians have to say about cosmology? And I'm like, literally does not fucking matter. Not in terms of knowing about cosmology anyway. But wait, shouldn't it? Isn't like part of the idea that aliens told the Sumerians this stuff? Yes. So like yeah. that is how they would have a better idea about cosmology. But I don't feel was that wasn't even brought that up. That wasn't in really this, brought up uh, in this movie. No. That part of the ancient aliens nonsense. Yeah. I mean, it, it was kind of alluded to because yes. there were some pictures that they showed where it was but like see, aliens show up and are giving shit to Sumerians. why we should care about what the Somalians or Somalians. Hey, you gotta give Sumerians. it up say about cosmology right. that's why we should care right but that piece of information isn't really presented uh as yeah there is one throwaway sentence yeah your number one source of evidence is a uh people who were there told you it happened mm -hmm. so yeah. eyewitness accounts usually trump most uh other things yeah there there is a throwaway sentence later on in the movie where he's like but but and then he and then he moves around it's it's easy to miss i'll point it out when it when it shows up but also like all of these like well maybe you know absu represents the sun and i'm like no because they had a god that was the sun that was utu that was the sumerian sun god you're just wrong and that's the thing is that anyone who knows anything at all about sumerian mythology that looks at sitchin is just like well he just gets all the most basic possible facts wrong so every conclusion he draws is therefore invalid, right? Yeah. I also love that at one point here, they're like, look, it's just so crazy that the gods are so similar across all of these different mythologies. And I'm like, no, you literally explained that these myths grew and spread between cultures. This is like being surprised that your son, Dave Jr. is also named Dave right. the movie. Yeah. But it is, it is kind of a weird coincidence. <laughs> Dave, I, I always that's not feel, a common name. I always felt like it was. It should be more of like a. Is see how boring this is? See how right. uncreative all yes. of these people were. They just kept doing the same shit over and over again. Right, come up with new shit. Exactly, like Niburu assholes. Or right, Scorpion Man and Fish or Scorpion Man. Man and Fish Man. Yep, going on adventures. Yep, <laughs> road trip movie. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh, fish but it's gotta be a submarine. Fish man's gotta be in a fish bowl. Though. Okay, he's right. Yeah, constantly no, he's wet. But, okay, and scorpion but, man's gotta stay dry. No, no, no. Okay, scorpion <laughs> man is riding on a toad. Uh, <laughs> we know where uh, this is going. We foreshadowing. There was no frog man though. Uh, yeah. Well, that's what I'm well, saying. That's the fish man is him. gonna yeah. save him. So the for scorpion man kills the toad. Fish man saves scorpion man. Uh -huh. They're like, actually, I don't think we need to stab each other, and they move on and they Unlikely live. Unlikely best friends. Exactly. Fuck yep. yeah. yeah. Fox it works. It tracks. Already pitching better shows than the Babylonian epic. <laughs> right. But my my favorite reach as part of this mythology thing where they're trying to like slap every title on is Marduk because Marduk, they've just got fucking nothing. They're like Marduk is uh, he's a planet. We're going to talk about that in a second. Maybe he's a star. We don't he's, know. It's a, an could equinox be. and um a spare anyone that's got a spare tire he's that too like they're they're just fucking shotgunning in the desperate yeah. hope so once again i, I want to go through this quick because it's fucking insanity and it's all stupid but to understand the movie well i don't know about understand but to follow what we're saying you'll have to know this shit so they go through the sitchin cosmology which suggests that there was a planet that was way bigger than earth that orbited between mars and jupiter that got hit by a rogue planet coming into the galaxy created the asteroid belt, fell into the Earth, what was what was left over, fell into the Earth's orbit and became Earth, right? That's the basics of it. <laughs> now, he, they also attach a whole bunch of shit to Neptune and Uranus. Uh, this, is, this is why Uranus is sitting on its side because it got smacked by that planet too, prob probably. 
Mm-hmm. And, and and the four winds uh from that from Marduk from the thing are probably four little chunks of Uranus that followed it. No idea. Right? Yeah. No, I tracks. Yeah. <laughs> what about this? What about this? What do you got? Scorpion Man and Fish Man go to White Castle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Stoner comedy. I have a question. Yeah, I have yeah, a question. Yeah. Okay. Are what kind of costumes are they wearing? Are we doing no, like a, a scorpion and a fish? Are you sure you don't want to make it more realistic? Like they're wearing clothes that evoke the idea no. of being a scorpion? You want to go straight up? And no one comments on okay, it. Okay. Next question. <laughs> yeah. Costume or are they actually Practical. scorpion man? Practical. You know, like is it a scorpion no, and man? We are going to have to create scorpion man hybrids. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's what we're going to have to the do. Stoner cop, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stoner cop movie. Okay. Is Cronenberg available? <laughs> so. I have I have put out feelers. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Much like Scorpion. Yeah. <laughs> so now, and, and then, of course, as we move further into the silly shit, ultimately, Earth and well, Earth, they're calling Tiamat at this point. Earth and, and Marduk, the Nibiru, this other planet. Jesus Christ, this is so fucking stupid. They're going to collide. And there's this moment where we see the two planets, the cartoons of the two planets getting closer and closer. And the music is like, they're going to pull out swords, guys. There's going to be some fucking karate fighting planets here in just a second. <laughs> but they, we don't we don't get that. They just tease us with no. that. It's much bullshit. No. And we get a planet collision later. We, we do. do. It's coming. Come on. We do get a and then and the, the planets collide and they're just like, yeah, don't just like shooting an arrow through a dragon's belly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Made perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway so that's where the earth comes from and the moon and uranus apparently and then he comes in and he clarifies he's like by the way we're going by sitchin's first book which he completely contradicted later in some of his books because it's all just made up bullshit <laughs> so it doesn't matter <laughs> but there is there's like this weird like this could be even dumber flex yes right we're like there are some people who believe that the aliens reshaped the earth so that it was round with laser beams yeah, this is sort of I like to think of this section of the of the documentary, if that's what you want to call it, as the spitballing why our documentary hasn't made sense section because <laughs> they're like, <laughs> all right, now you're probably thinking bunch of that sounded like bullshit. I would way rather develop this series with Fishman and Scorpion Man. <laughs> and you're right. But hear me out. Maybe the aliens told us the universe was created in code. Yep. And correct me if I'm wrong here. Did you guys feel like they sort of admitted their own fuck up like i felt like they were like guys we really fucking blew it on the marduk thing please give us a second chance we got a second guess as to what the marduk thing means into real planets but you know maybe it's all the things we don't know yet yeah could those be marduk uh, no nah, i here's here's what i feel i feel about this like 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 i said this is an introduction you know like you go to the center and you sit for this introductory video and at the end of it, they're like, all right, come back next week. And then next week you find out, ah, you know, that we told you all of this stuff. But guess what? Now you're going to learn the real truth. Ooh. You know, now you're going to get the real stuff. We were telling you all about Zachariah Sitchin's full stuff. He didn't know everything yet, but you have to have a basis for this That's knowledge in order to get the good stuff, <laughs> you know? See if you yeah. come back. Exactly. We told you nonsense. Yeah, if you come yeah. back after this shit, then you're in. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. We know we've got a mark. No, cause they, they they actually like sort of allude to that, right? Because then they start like quoting from a website called SitchinIsWrong.com and they're like, see, Sitchin has been thoroughly debunked, but let's explore his theory a little further. I'm like, why would you do that, though? Well, because there's also a <laughs> Sitchin isn't wrong dot com right, there, that says, yes. or whatever yeah, well, the fuck. Yeah, they threw that one out pretty much in unimpeachably. Once you threw out uh, Sitchin isn't yes, wrong, I was like, well, I he's guess he's been thoroughly debunked. But also, people have debunked the debunker. Yeah, right, so, right. Well, so he's been bunked as well. Objective, yeah. objective yeah. truth does not exist. Rebunked. Whoops. Yeah. And then my favorite thing is at the end of this very very long debunking rebunking section they try to like hold hands with us by force and make us sing kumbaya yeah They're like look look guys guys look we're all fighting because some of us made an entire youtube movie about the crazy shit that came out of a liar's head in 1970s but we we just need to work together if we work together and hug you can't be mad at me for lying to you for 42 minutes and counting yes no, there's there's a very like let's not fight about who killed who kind of a moment here, right? They're like it's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's 
like my stuff is more f- fun to pretend is true mm-hmm. so we can do that i i got i got a little i got a little whiny uh like uh hey listen we all need to be open and treat all of these theories as equals, mm-hmm. uh, which I mean, I really wish these doctors and PhDs would stop making fun of me and leaving <laughs> mean comments yes. on my fucking videos. Because my theory is just as valid if we work together to make it sound righter. I right. just want to sit around and make weird cartoons with characters that have no neck, as is my fetish. <laughs> <laughs> No well, there's, also, <laughs> there's also these pathetic attempts for them to be like, but, you know, we're just pointing everything out. We're, we're exploring both sides. We're, we don't have a dog in this fight. Right. Because at one point they're like, well, maybe the gods don't actually represent planets. After all, as skeptics point out in the story, all of the gods get together and have beer and pastries together. And I'm like, yeah, that is our chief objection because planets don't have beer and pastries. <laughs> so <laughs> they have donuts. Yeah. That's what they give us. <laughs> yeah. Again. This is for your second visit, you know, like oh, right. at the beginning, we're all treating skeptics as being like, oh, see, skeptics add important part of this. And then on your second visit, they're like, you're not a skeptic, are you? <laughs> right. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be labeled a skeptic now, would you? No, 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 no. You want to be part of the group. Well, and there's also this kind of amazing moment where he's like, and what could it hurt to entertain our ideas? Anyway, if we all used our finite resources to look for the imaginary planet that Zechariah Sitchin work uh, made up, maybe we could find out that this is true. So, like, that's what could go wrong, right? We could redirect finite fucking resources to nonsense is what could go wrong. But they Mm. apparently don't even they don't even hear it when it's them saying it. What do you mean there's infinity amount of bullshit and therefore we can't look into everything equally? (laughs) You sound mean to me. (laughs) Too mean for YouTube, I'll say that. (laughs) All right, well, I'll tell you what. Obviously, I need to talk to my people at NASA and see where they are about finding the bonus planet. But before I do, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will this movie just straight up admit it's wrong again? Will it keep going like that doesn't matter again? Why? Find out the answers to these questions and more. We'll return for the degenerative conclusion of the Nibiru movie. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. All right. Noah, you ready for the last uh, sponsor of the show? Uh, sure am. Uh, who's the sponsor? Uh, it's uh, Oh, it's BetterHelp Online Therapy. Oh, we love them. They've actually helped a bunch of folks in our audience find and afford therapy that they really needed. Yeah. And uh, this month, they just want us to... Talk about how much time we spend on ourselves in a given week versus how much time we spend on other people and how we balance those. Oh, I just I um, I mostly just work. Mostly work. Yeah, I um, I spend a lot of time on my son. No, you do. That's true. I've seen you do that. And I see my friends on Wednesdays. Also true. But. Apparently, therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind, which maybe we do a little little bit. Maybe a little. Anyways, if you're thinking of starting therapy, podcast listener, you can give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and Switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. BetterHelp. Get a little personal with the copy. Right? Yeah. Just sell your therapy. Don't you need more time. <laughs> Uh, And then we've got slides 11 through 44 on sort of the importance of the Sumerian epic in world history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, Sure, Chris, what's up? I just I just I I feel like we're overemphasizing the importance of the Sumerians here historically. Like, you know, nobody's doubting their importance or the completeness of their record, but we barely even mention the Egyptians. Yeah, I agree. I think if we underplay Egyptian contribution to uh, what we know about Babylonian history, we're going to seem highly biased. No, no, that's good feedback. Uh, we, we could just add into that. Aliens I think. told us about the time the sun's best friend exploded. Yes, they no, they did, Frank. Yes, thank you. They did. 
And we're back for still more of this shit. And now we're going to open up our research on Nibiru because apparently it was fucking closed before. I have no idea what the hell <laughs> they meant. But they're like, when you start looking into Nibiru, there's mountains of information. And the information will vary between people saying, of course, it's real. And people saying, you're an idiot and I am pissing on you in contempt. So the reality must be somewhere in the middle. <laughs> We're on a spectrum. Yeah. It's somewhere there. Yep. I was a big fan of their interstitials for these, where they would have flat pictures with little speech bubbles like, I think you're dumb. That was good. Yes. That really <laughs> illustrated the point that they were making, which is that really understand some people us. will think you are dumb. Do you want yes. to be the guy saying yeah, that? Yeah, you don't want to be the guy who's like, yeah, I think you are dumb. That's uh, that's not a fun guy to be. Mm -mm. You want to be the smiling, <laughs> happy guy saying, ooh, Nibiru is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. This is also almost one of my favorite best worst because they go, we're going to call it Nibiru, even though it doesn't fit into any of the stories we spent the first two thirds of the movie telling you because there's a bunch of conspiracy theories already called Nibiru and we're kind of going to fit our stomach in. <laughs> we were Sorry, trying to cash in. <laughs> we're kind of in a bind here. Yeah, we're kind of in a bind here. It's, it's all about SEO. Really? It's, it's like how everyone comes back to the Jews because it's just easier, you know, like the Nibiru is our Jews. <laughs> Nibir Jews. So there's also an interesting bit here where they're like, you know, this whole extra planet thing may sound crazy, but some real scientists actually used to think that there was an extra planet. They learned more stuff and stopped thinking that because of all the new stuff that they had learned. But we still think it. And so yeah, we're like science. There's a lot of things scientists used to believe. Right. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of this whole movie would have been well received at like the 1830s British Adventurer Society where it'd be like, right, ladies and gentlemen, haha, -ha, just kidding, there are no ladies here. Gentlemen, I have discovered a 12th planet. <laughs> yeah. Right. I have confirmed the existence of the hairy one. <laughs> yeah. It's also like they repeat with startling confidence a bunch of scientific stuff that was like, Ah, that was a smudge on the lens. Sorry about that, right. everybody. Sorry. Or yeah, like, no, we were wrong about the size of Uranus. This was before <laughs> Voyager went out and we could actually measure it. Yeah, that kind of shit. <laughs> or yeah. was a paper that was published and then immediately retracted because a graduate student was like, send motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, and then they're like, and then in 2014, NASA proved beyond the shadow of a doubt that there couldn't possibly be another Saturn-sized planet anywhere near the fucking sun. So maybe it's a little smaller than Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one was my favorite. That one. that one was my favorite of like, okay, we've looked out to even as far as 10,000 astronomical units away for a planet the size of Saturn, and there just isn't one. And their response is like, well, you didn't look for a smaller size planet. Yes, did yeah, you, you didn't. You, <laughs> you looked for dumb, a Neptune size one. <laughs> I bet your equipment doesn't even measure planets half the size of Saturn, you <laughs> idiots. <laughs> so you're telling me you went up and down this beach with a metal detector and found nothing. Well, then the pirate's treasure is obviously wood, motherfucker. Yes, right. So shit. <laughs> what, you can't think around that? Oh, you're dumber than a pirate. <laughs> And then there's this there's this great bit where they're like, but there are these two real scientists. They name them and show pictures of them sciencing and stuff. And they're like, and these guys think that there might be a Neptune sized planet that's like got a really, really eccentric orbit really, really far from the sun. And other than the fact that it never comes within 180 astronomical units of Earth. It's exactly like Nibiru. Your whole thing is that Nibiru crashed into Earth. Yeah. Mm hmm. 180 astronomical units is the solar system for fuck's sake. <laughs> Nibiru fucking heard the doom music and fucked up eight out of nine of the planets. Right. But these two guys in 2016 were like, okay, hear me out. There's probably a planet somewhere. And they were like, you had us at planet. <laughs> you had us at probably. <laughs> My friend, you do not know what desperate looks like until you find us saying that planet's Nibiru now. <laughs> right. He's right. He's like, well, maybe its orbit just rounded out over the years. And I'm like, yeah, because you're allowed that was to fun. use whatever words you want. Man. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Like they had a nice little model of the solar system and it was spinning. And then they just, uh -huh. they just made the lines bigger and you're like oh well they that's just move it they're like look we can actually put these lines wherever we want to they can't stop you <laughs> that's very 
very reasonable. That is very reasonable. Yeah. I had not considered you could just move the literal goalposts. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's like Sitchin's books. There's diagrams in yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, you can't, can't, it's against the yes, law. Yes, obviously. <laughs> And he's like, but now if you think about it, there's a bunch of different anomalies that the Nibiru theory explains. And I'm like, well, if you mean by explains, if you mean mentions, then yes. So we're going to take those one at a time. There's four of them all together. We're going to start with the mystery of why the asteroid belt is there, which isn't a mystery, by the way. We know because Jupiter's gravity is so great that no planet could really form. It kept getting tugged back apart. But that's it. Right. right. No. <laughs> or, or, or maybe it's an exploded dragon who got in a fight with her grandson. <laughs> the four eyed, four mouthed master of the four winds. Now we're cooking. You <laughs> sound like a fighter, okay? You need to keep your heart open. Right. Okay? Yes, exactly. And we need to work exactly. together. All right. Mm -hmm. You're just you're just fighting. <laughs> I especially love the bit where they're like, so we checked and the, the actual amount of material in the asteroid belt is nowhere near big enough for our theory to work. So what if Nibiru kept coming back and gathering up a little bit of Earth at a time like fucking Andy Dufresne taking his wall out into the prison <laughs> yard or something and tugged it away? That could that would make sense, huh? Huh? Uh -huh. That's the part of the movie where it should have been like, hey, this isn't about planets anymore. This is personal. Right. I'm taking out the Earth one way or the other. <laughs> this Earth is going down. I okay? keep coming yeah. back with a larger posse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> so that's the first anomaly. The second anomaly is the moon. And it, so he explains how the moon was actually created. And the creation of the moon is actually this fucking fascinating thing. But he's like, but it was smacked into by a, by a large, like Mars-sized planet at one point and our thing also has smacked into huh? so if you think about it it's pretty much the same theory <laughs> it's like me explaining my drunk driving come on <laughs> where did where would the moon it was a dragon fight come on this is no, no because because eli the moon has wetness their theory has wetness same ergo <laughs> dragon fight with the with the dragon's best friend, the hairy man, or whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. See, now that's the thing about being on the show. Again, that's the trouble, because normally we wouldn't have gotten to this point, but had I made it to this point against all odds, <laughs> this would be the part where I say, okay, that's fine. And then I leave. This would be the lead. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, that's yeah, fine. Jordan and I both, when we were watching it, felt like if we agree, this ends. Yeah, if we just say, yeah, if I just say I agree with you, then yeah. you end the, the YouTube video. Like, yeah. is there isn't there like a dead switch, uh, mm. something like that? Good point. Yes, gotta and go. And then the YouTube video ends, and it's like we got yeah. it. Yes, yeah, right, right. Uh. And then we we move on to the third anomaly, which is Pluto, and it's like scientists can't explain Pluto, but in our theory, it used to be a moon of Saturn, and then it just kind of wasn't anymore. And I'm like, well, then you also can't explain. Pluto, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, by the third anomaly, they're resorting to like 1990s Jerry Seinfeld premises. Like, what's the deal with Pluto? Huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. And then we get the fourth anomaly, which is the fact that Uranus is on its side. And it's like as, as though it got. And again, Uranus is probably on its side because it got smacked by some proto planet in the early solar system. And they're like, see, smacked just like in our thing. It does sound like you agree with them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about I'm going to throw this at you? Okay. Maybe we're the ones at a weird angle. Whoa. <laughs> maybe everybody but Uranus got smacked. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe, maybe we're all not Fishman. <laughs> maybe Fishman's the normal one. <laughs> maybe he's the man. We're Airman. Right. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My, my favorite thing about this fourth anomaly is that they're like, yeah, and Uranus got in a fight with Tiamat or Marduk or whoever we're pretending planet is right now. And then they show their little computer projection, yes. but it doesn't yes. match that theory. So they're like, okay, maybe not smashed so much as like sideswiped. Like, you know, like you're trying to move into Uranus's lane and Uranus doesn't let you in. So then you and Uranus have to exchange insurance information. That's, that's like our story about a dragon from earlier, huh? 
<laughs> yes. Yeah, they showed this like actual computer model of how Uranus got on its side to begin with. And they're, they're like, see, just like in our story where four moons got pulled away from Uranus and became part of it. All right, it's not just like our story, but it's like, it's... <laughs> now I like it. Now I want to go back. Like, I like that. I like that explanation for it. Just because I want to think of a religion now and our parables that would make sense out of Marduk. And, and it's like, okay, all right, okay. So you know how when you're at the grocery store, okay? If you go to the grocery store and you go to the self-checkout aisle, but somebody else's groceries get into your groceries? Mm. Oh, that's Marduk. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that's Marduk, that's baby. That's Marduk, baby. <laughs> you know how people are like, that's jazz, baby. That's what I'm going to say when there's an accident now. I'm just going to be like, that's Marduk, baby. That's, that's Marduk, Marduk baby. You got to roll with it. You got to be open to it. You done got Marducked. Yep. <laughs> here's here's this scientist out Marducking outside doing all kinds of <laughs> investigations. <laughs> Can I get girls on Instagram to say that Marduk is in retrograde? And that is why their relationship with the DJ didn't work out. This is the, this, we're building a brand here. So then they, they remind us once again that their opinions are just as valid as astronomers. They're talking about Zachariah Sitchin and they're like, you know, to some people he was brilliant, but to people who actually know anything at all about any other stuff he was talking about, he was a pseudoscientist and a pseudo historian. So the truth must be somewhere in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be. It's a, it's a spectrum of yeah, possibilities. You can't, you it has can't to be, be yeah. on either extreme. It's not like there's some sort of like right or wrong when it comes to the fundamental <laughs> building blocks of the universe. <laughs> right, right. Right? It's it's what everybody wants to be true. Yeah. 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 I will say they did win me over at one point here because the guy who created fucking this guy's an asshole.com is a fundamentalist Christian. And I was like, okay, that is a really good point that he's probably full of shit. Yeah, too. right, right. <laughs> They're like, well, yeah, he can't be right. They also point out that some people say that Zachariah Sitchin is a fucking false flag operation designed to keep us from the real truth about Marduk. <laughs> so- I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> say say more. Yeah, I was like, oh, are we going to start a different YouTube video? Mm-hmm. All right, okay, right, right. Play next. Thank you very much. <laughs> There's also this great fucking moment where they're like, so the scientists think this and the archaeologists think that, but what do you think? Why don't you put your theories in the comments section where all the real scholarship happens? Yes. You know, the YouTube comment section. We can sort it out there. <laughs> I fucking hate that kind of like engagement bait. Yeah, I, that. Mm-hmm. Makes mm-hmm. me furious. That guy isn't in- interested in whatever comments nope. come in. And also, at this point, I put my hands together. You know that, like, ah, job done. Yep. This I is, thought we were done. This yeah. is the conclusion. Do 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 do. Nope. No. We were like, okay, clearly they're wrapping up. This is the wrap up. They We've use gone the through. word like concluded. Totally. And, and yeah. So and so we're like, okay, let's just check about this. And there's 20 minutes left, and we're like. There better be fucking 11 minutes of credits because this is absurd. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And this is, of course, where we get the stuff about the re on D debunker guy or whatever. And basically the point he's making is if you go through this dude who's dedicated his life to proving how wrong Zechariah Sitchin is about everything except how he likes his fucking eggs. They're like, if you go through his website, you'll find a few minor points that he was wrong about. So he's not trustworthy at all. And I'm like, yeah, but guys, the stuff you get wrong is literally planet sized, <laughs> right? The, anyway, and, and and then, of course, they're like, but but ultimately, it's up to you to decide what's correct. And again, that is not how that shit works. <laughs> Look, what you're failing to take into consideration is that it is impossible for two people to be ro- both wrong. Yeah, yes, <laughs> absolutely. That has never happened. It will never happen. <laughs> Two people who disagree, both being wrong, that would mean nothing is possible. What do you you both get yep. sucked into a black hole? The universe has to start over? Think logically. Mm-hmm. And so, and then in a desperate effort to fill the the 20 minutes or so that are remaining, they're like, so now let's talk about the electric universe theory. And if you're like me and you love some good pseudo physics, this was worth sticking around for. This is some nonsense that's usually embraced by flat earthers, Mm -hmm. right? This idea that the sun isn't actually a nuclear reactor at all. It's actually just electricity, which it's not like we can check. It's not. We know what those things both are. 
And it's not that last one. Gentlemen, I have returned from the Far East and I am here to tell you that I believe the sun is actually made of lightning. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And it turns on and off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it does in a stupid fucking story. They're, they're like, well, you know, lightning is a mystery that's not entirely understood, which means we can claim it's anything we want to. Yes. Again, not how that works, man. Look. Do you know how lightning works? So it could be a dragon fight. All I'm saying <laughs> is open your mind and stop hogging the pipe. That's all we're saying. Okay, so you think you're making this puzzle that says, I am smart. I get it. You think you're making this cool puzzle. Now, what if you can't find a piece? How about I put in a piece from my own puzzle? <laughs> ah, see, it works just like that. That's how it works. You can put yeah. in pieces of any puzzle into right. any puzzle. It's standardized operation. This is Henry Ford, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right. And that's why the sun is made of lightning. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think that they've got a slide that would strongly suggest that Tesla would be on their side of things. Well, totally. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you're still watching this, you're probably one of those idiots who thinks Nikola Tesla like had a secret cave full of future technology. So <laughs> if we threw his name out there, will you navigate back from the pornography tab you were jerking off to <laughs> bump our engagement a little more? All right. OK, fine. But if Tesla's machines work, how does that work unless the sun is made of lightning? Right. Well, right. 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 Exactly. Right. Probably what he was thinking. And then they're like, but how does this pseudoscience connect to our pseudo history? And we're all like, we don't fucking care. We don't. It See, doesn't. The sun, the sun is electricity. Right. And mm -hmm. we know mm -hmm. this because the moon is made of cheese. Yeah. And yet it is not melted. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Duh. if it was if it was hot. Yeah. 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 So now they present an entirely new theory that contradicts everything that they've set up to this point and reality, which is actually pretty impressive. They're like, what if Earth and Mars used to have a different sun that was a brown dwarf and instead of orbiting around it, we were underneath it. And I'm like, why the fuck are we doing any of this? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. I'd entirely checked out. Yeah, that the day. moment we got to the <laughs> yeah. lightning universe. and that, But I did appreciate that at one point they were like, and we think it took about 300 years for the Earth to go from one sun to the other sun. Yeah. Like, what? I'm sorry? How'd you make that estimate? Yeah, yeah, tell me you... more. Tell me more about the 300 years specifically. <laughs> I am no longer interested in Nibiru whatsoever. I want to know the math behind 300 years. Everything else is meaningless. I want to know... Like, where is it in between? It took 300 years to hand us off from the one sun. To, so our brown dwarf sun, it, it gets too close to this solar system and it turns off and then the uh, and it turns our sun on because it creates fucking some kind of conduit or whatever. Anyway, our brown dwarf sun becomes Saturn in this theory. Ooh, I missed that because I had checked out. Yeah, I yes. had not realized that the <laughs> yeah. brown sun still hung around in Earth. I thought it just went flying. Oh, yeah. The only thing I could think about was, like, they had those cartoons of people who are living through this. Totally. And I was like... Yes. No. The the juxtaposition of the chipper voice of like, and if you'll notice, the earth goes from one sun to the, and it took about 300 years over top of interstitials of like, ah! Yeah. ah! <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Ah! And you're they're like, all dead. And they're like, you're don't, all so dead. Don't worry about it. Sure, there were probably more earthquakes and it was tough to live through this time period. Mm. Right. But the theory here is that two fucking star systems collided and there was a civilization on Earth that was like, this is fucking weird. We should write this down and make some dragon myths about this, huh? Huh? Well, they didn't have the words for planets back then, dumb dumb. Well, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. First of all, everyone get under a desk so that we all survive this and can write cuneiform tablets about it. <laughs> all right, great. We all survived. 100% survival everybody rate. Everybody ducked and covered. Okay, great, great. Great. And then as this is all happening, Venus is spit out of our star somehow. Fuck, fuck if I understand it. And Venus and Mars run into each other. Or they, I'm sorry, they don't quite run into each other. They get close and there's a great electric discharge because planets are made of electricity, remember? I don't fucking know. And, and that great electric discharge, that is the dragon fight from before that we've negated already. I, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Jordan, do you have something to say? No, I do not. I just wrote it down because I missed it. Screw you. <laughs> Jordan, <laughs> do you want to tell your pun to the class? I don't want to tell class? my pun to the class now. 
It was there. There was a time for it. And now the pun is not fun it's for me. still worth it. No, now the pun isn't Jordan. Fun. All right. Jordan. Okay. We're at the top of the mountain. So so when the, all that was going on and there was all this people living through the shifting of solar systems. Marduk and cover. Worth it. <laughs> 100% worth it. 100% worth oh, it. Oh, fuck yeah, man. In this movie, we're going back for that shit. We're making a oh, Mark yeah. Duck and Cover t shirt. Mark Duck and Cover mug. He wrote that on his notebook, showed it to me, and then underlined it. I was like, God damn it. It was right there. It was fuck right yeah. there. Fuck yeah. Uh, I'm not going to let you showboat oh, like that privately. No, no, I wasn't showboating. I was embarrassed. Oh, we didn't geez, earn Jordan's trust with the joke <laughs> that good. <laughs> he knew it no. would be the basis for our merch for 2023. I was late, so I felt shame. I was right, late. No, I get it. I get it. We can edit it in. It'll sound like you nailed it. So, and, and also, I'm not even going to try to pretend like I remember how anything connects at this point. But there's this one point where they're all they're showing this this symbol, right? This circle with lines coming out of it, and they're like, you know, all over the world we find this symbol and all these disparate civilizations and shit. And it's like, yeah, man, that's the sun. That's like, yep, a rudimentary image of the sun, like like what the about kids it? draw. Wait, so you're saying that a circle with a bunch of fiery lines around it or inside of it? Is is like a regular thing that other what reference point would all of these cultures have to make right. such a similar symbol? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my son's preschool classroom is apparently also aware that the electrical universe theory matches up a bunch. <laughs> so. Hey, that's where the Marduk theory came from the first time. Yeah. <laughs> right. And they're like, and if there wasn't a giant electrical discharge that went from Venus to Mars, where does the Valus Marineris come from? And where does the, they say, and also it's probably where the Grand Canyon came from. They have this whole big thing where they explain how electricity could have carved out the Grand Canyon. And I'm like, but what about all the other canyons? They're not as big. Right? It's not like there's just the one canyon on Earth. But they're not as big. Those are regular canyons. This one's grand. Okay? Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Regular canyons are made by glaciers or whatever bullshit you want right. to say, but Grand Canyon, that's the good shit. It's huge. I also love that they, they make a little cross-reference to the bullshit podcast of here. They're like, hey, and if you're loving this, you're not. You check out this whole documentary, The Electric Universe on the Gaia Network. Oh. Regular listeners will remember, that's the channel where we found the documentary Eat the Sun, where that kid tried to starve himself to death for a second. Yeah. Uh -huh. was, he, was he trying to do photosynthesis? Yes. yes literally, yes. yes. He, he was staring into the sun for food and water. That's I was going to say, it's even dumber than that because he was staring directly <laughs> at it, too. Yeah. That's unwise. So he's trying to go starve himself and go <laughs> blind. Yeah. Spoilers for the episode. I'm going to... I I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm just going to let that go because I'm a I, better person Back than when you. I used to smoke a ton of weed, me and my buddy, Dr. Gums, he's an actual doctor now, but he was in pre-med. He was just regular Gums We back would then. sit around and smoke <laughs> he a was bunch just of weed. Gums, Mr. Gums. And I would always berate him with questions about why we can't do photosynthesis <laughs> and how like, uh -huh. you're a doctor, find me a way to put chlorophyll in me. <laughs> and, Half of it was trying to annoy him, but the other half was I was very sincere. No, I'm yeah, still. No, I, I, mean, yeah, I, no, I don't know why we are not spending all of our time figuring out how to photosynthesize. What are we doing learning how to farm and shit? Right. Let's let well, the sun fucking, do it. Why not do both? To be eh, fair, well, fine. Cover our bases. Happy. There's also this great moment of like f another one of these faux skeptical moments where they're like, but you know, this electrical universe theory, it doesn't explain everything. Like, for example, who would these other Sumerian gods represent if, if, the electric universe theory was correct. And I'm like, yeah, that was the real weakness in the theory. It didn't line up with fucking Sumerian cosmology. That was my issue. With yeah. It. I appreciate, I appreciate the turnaround they did there where they like explained all of the science behind it. And then when the science comes into contradiction with the Sumerian shit, they're like, see, <laughs> obviously <laughs> that if you're not in line with what these people think, uh, Kabbalah and also Fibonacci. What are you doing? <laughs> Haven't you seen all those people with those tattoos of the spiral? Yeah. yeah they right. can't all be wrong. <laughs> so, and then there's this one last plea of like, and if you guys don't make fun of us on your podcast, maybe we can all know more things. Damn it. 
So, okay. So now we're actually getting towards the conclusion. But before they wrap things up, they have just some a little bit more random fucking bullshit for us. Yep. Right? They go, now, it's important to warn you that a lot of people who talk about Nibiru say that Nibiru is going to crash into Earth imminently and, and going to destroy us all. It's not. And I'm like, it's nice that we can all agree on something at the end here. I believe that the specific words were, I would like to dispel the rumors. Yeah, and he did a <laughs> condescending voice, yeah. too, about it. It was like, yes, it's not cool. I'd like to dispel these crazy <laughs> rumors <laughs> that we could be hurt by this planet. Right. That would be silly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's not be dumb about this. <laughs> yeah. So they they dispel all of those rumors. They they did not get a hand job from Nibiru. It was not even that sad. They, Nibiru had a girlfriend at the time. It was not even a thing. But yeah, and then they give us the credits. They're, they're like, stick around after the credits to learn more of what you guys are going to try to get Dan and Jordan to watch later. Uh, Dan? <laughs> I did not watch the preview. <laughs> I turned it off. Oh, good. You want to stay fresh for it. I get it. Dan, we'll do the rundown. You guys want to come back next time? We'll do the rundown with The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, or maybe our next movie. Maybe we'll do the rundown with The Rock. I feel like this is a bait and switch. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I'm struggling here. I remember them talking about the rundown with The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. That's what I so, remember. <laughs> I think what's fun about this episode is that now I trust the two of you as little as as I do everybody in the happy science cult. <laughs> oh, right 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 like, right. I know you, I know I can't trust you. Yeah. You're, you're going to be mean to me. You're going to hurt me <laughs> and abuse me in some way. And we're going to die just like their founder. <laughs> it was so funny that Jordan thought it was the same thing as that. And uh, I was like, no, 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 that's happy science. This is spirit science. That's not this fair. Is, you can't oh, do that. Oh, that's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it's only one word away. You can't do You're that. You're our science correspondent. It's a compliment. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Senior science. <laughs> I just have to point this one line out for the for the next time on Spirit Science little teaser that they gave us. There's one point where they go, because you know, I guess in the next movie, they're going to like really explore the idea that the gods are actually aliens from the planet Nibiru. And they're like, from Lemuria to Atlantis, we'll explore. And I'm like, those places both don't exist. So like you literally just said from nowhere to nowhere else. How accidentally apropos. <laughs> so... No, before we let you guys go, I wanted to mention this because, Dan, you were telling us before the record that this was not your first experience with spirit science. Yeah, I I, I mean, it's a very distinctive, and I don't mean that as a compliment, no. uh, but aesthetic. You know, like that cartoon character. Yeah. You know, like, and I, I definitely seen years, years back, like something that had to do with Atlantis. I'm pretty sure. And I mean, you know, I have a soft spot for Atlantis based stuff. So totally. I'll stick around and watch some bullshit if it has to do with, uh, you know, after this, we're going to watch the uh, Disney Atlantis starring Michael J. Fox. Our, oh, our, our, our souls all come from Atlantean yeah. beings and stuff. I don't necessarily believe all that, but I am definitely a sucker for sticking around and watching stuff like that. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I'm not sure what the video was or whatever. But yeah, I've, I'd, I'd seen I'd seen something of theirs. All right. Well, I came into it with a oh, not again kind of feeling. Mm. <laughs> this time, so. All right. Well, now Eli knows what to look for. Some Atlantean shit for you next well, time. I seem, I seem to recall, if I'm not mistaken, the video that they had about Atlantis had to do with like there being a bunch of different races on Earth. And then the Hebrews come from outer space. Oh, no. <laughs> and that was kind of where I, I felt like this might be trouble. This could be a problem. <laughs> yeah, this, this, <laughs> I don't want this on my permanent record. Yeah. So to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So before we let you go, I have one more question for you. Where does this movie rank in terms of the bullshit that you normally subject yourself to? Is it dumb or is it less dumb, more coherent, less coherent? Where would you put this on the um, on the Alex Jones scale? Well, I mean, you have on one hand people who would say that this is the most insane thing we've ever heard of. And then on the other hand, you have people who will say that this is not insane at all. So I so think we can correctly assume it's somewhere, somewhere in the middle. In the yeah. middle. <laughs> I, think, I think that Alex Jones' stuff himself is probably more dangerous and like awful than this. Yeah. But we also do episodes for our Project Camelot mm -hmm. stuff and like space weirdos and stuff. And like 
while I was watching this, I was experiencing it on that plane. Yeah. And I was thinking, like, if I were trying to do a Wacky Wednesday type episode about this, mm -hmm. I would have turned it off. Yeah. Like five, <laughs> ten minutes in. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. I, I think that the, it's not crazy enough in a fun, interesting way like maybe Gary Cassidy's Yeah, nonsense. I mean, it, it does feel like we're missing out on the right religion. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the wrong way, obviously, but like yeah. <laughs> a Captain Mark Richards based sci-fi religion it, is just more fun. But yeah, if if this was a like Project Camelot thing, it would be all about Fishman. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and that's what I'm that's looking for. That's the only for. thing that yeah. we would be into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'd be like, okay, who else does Fishman have in his retinue? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. right on. Gary would be psych uh, psychically talking to Fishman. Oh, totally. Yeah. We would have a remote viewing of Fishman's family. Mm -hmm. Oh, it'd be great. <laughs> fish baby. <laughs> the fish wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> All right, and just a quick reminder for our audience, if you want to hear more from Dan and Jordan, and trust me, you do, you're going to find a link to Knowledge Fight on the show notes for this episode. Dan, Jordan, thank you so much for hanging out with us again. Oh, thank you for having us. Fuck you. Yep, also that. <laughs> <laughs> we we are the duality of man, I believe. <laughs> we are like Tiamat and <laughs> yes, Mark. You are fish exactly. and man, the duality <laughs> of man. <laughs> but thanks for having us. And well, that's going to do it for our review of the Nibiru movie. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to trick ourselves back into the studio next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, we've been edging ourselves with this for almost a calendar year, but it's here. It's digital. We'll be watching the Left Behind movie Too Bad for Nicolas Cage. Left Behind. Oh, Rise the of the Antichrist. Hey! Sorbs. I've been looking forward to this one so goddamn much. Kevin Sorbo. All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 402 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Dan and Jordan, or perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among the ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review, sharing the show on our various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Skate the Gay, The Citation, Need a D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written in performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Jeffs on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder, earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Spirit Science has several dozen other movies. Buckle up. Noah went on to no actually himself to sleep for days It's a hell of a list. It was a hell of a list. <laughs> that is actually the one thing I liked about the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, list? yeah. Man. <laughs> Those, uh, the, that list of Scorpion. That good... Scorpion. Really? That's a, okay. Yeah, that was a good cast of uh, the, the G.I. Joe villains. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, no. If, if if that was the beginning of a Mega Man game, exactly. I think I would have they would have been nailing it. Yeah. But again, if it were Mega Man, there are three snakes. Two yeah. Snakes. Yes. <laughs> Probably had to fight them all in the same level. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.